All right, guys, here we are with our Avengers Infinity War spoiler review. If you haven't seen the movie, go check it out and come back. And if you haven't seen our spoiler-free review, it's in the links below. So click on that if you haven't seen the movie. Otherwise, if you don't care about spoilers, this is the review for spoilers. you. Spoilers. We're going to talk about the Warned. deep details, yeah. the consequences of everything that happened in Infinity War. Yeah. So, Nate, we both wanted stakes walking into this one. Yes. We wanted, as morbid as it sounds, we wanted characters to die just to show us that Anything could happen. Now, yeah. before we get into the deaths at the very end of the movie, yeah. let's talk about the deaths that happened along the journey. Like, yeah. which one, did, did any of them make you feel like the stakes were raised or like, you know, it felt a real impact with you? And if so, who? 100%. They set the stakes very high right off of the very beginning of this movie. They killed Loki. Like, and that's, Heimdall. And Heimdall. That's huge. Like, yeah. I'm right when I saw this movie, I was like, oh shit, people are going to die in this movie. And Loki being one of the most favorite villains slash characters of the MCU, they just snap his neck in the first 10 minutes and it's done. So, yeah, I think that, you know, that affected me a little bit. Yeah, I think the one that affected me the most was, even though it was, as soon as the scene began, you knew it was going to happen, was Gamora. Yeah. Because as far as, like, the side characters, like Thor's supporting cast, like Loki, like Heimdall, it's like, all right, side characters getting killed off. Yes, they've been in multiple movies and they've played a part in these movies before, you know, a heavy role in them, but it's just yeah. like, all right, when, what, what about the characters you really let me connect to, you really developed an arc with? Are you going to kill off one of them? And then when Gamora dies, that's when I was like, all okay. right, all bets are off. Like, yeah. anything, especially given her relationship to Thanos and that Thanos is the one that kills her. Like, right. that's when it's just like, all right, he'll kill anyone. What like, a crucial moment, though, to show Thanos' emotion, to show that he actually does feel love. Yeah. And he feels and that, love for her. That helped build the sympathy for Thanos. Big like time. once again, you know, when we were talking about our spoiler free about how if you care if you can care about the villain even that much, like the movie's doing its job. Yeah, but I mean just to go back to Loki real quick, like we've compared almost every super villain movie vil like to Loki. Right. Loki is the creme de la creme. So do you feel like this was sort of like Hey, Loki, guess what? I'm a bigger, I'm a badder, more charismatic villain than you. Like, you're done. I'm taking the throne here of villains in the MCU. And I think that Thanos kind of is better than Loki. I will say he's a better villain. I don't know about more charismatic. Not I mean, more, like, no, not more charismatic. Tom Hiddleston is Yeah, he's great. Loki's he's awesome. Loki. Yeah, and so. Like, that was, and that, that did have some, like, you know, emotional weight with me where it's not like, I don't miss the character of Loki so much. I miss Tom Hiddleston. As Loki. Loki, like that's like that was the bigger loss for me. Now, like Loki's dead, it's like, oh no, man, no more Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think that once again, just like it did with sympathy for Thanos with the loss of Gamora, I think with them killing off Loki, like Thor's got no one left. Like, yeah, that was it. And I think that they put that in there quite well with the conversation that he has with Rocket of just being like, well, what else do I have to lose? Yeah, you know, it was one of those nice moments where it's like, I got nothing else. All my family's dead. Yeah, and I I was and once that scene was happening, I was kind of hoping like Thor would be the one to like make a sacrifice, maybe Thor dying cuz like I said some of these side characters, even the characters who, you know, die at the end, die. Let's be real about this people. <laughs> but the, even the characters who die at the end, I'm like, "Come on, man, you didn't even have the balls to kill off one of the big four. You didn't kill Cap, you didn't kill Iron Man, you didn't kill Hulk. You but didn't there's kill a moment where he stabs Iron Man. I'm like, oh, here we go. I was ready for it. I was like, oh my god, I and love then, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. in this role, but I'm ready to let go and just like let you know the next Stark. one be Revenge of Iron Man kind of thing. Right. Like, but it didn't happen. No, like that was just one him. of the things too where I'm like, come on, movie. <laughs> Like I just it, okay, you're it, the movie. It was exactly okay, movie. You're the movie. But just I feel like I wanted bigger stakes. They tried to. I feel like they wanted to raise the stakes by killing some characters, but they just went about it in like a it's sheepish a kind of way. Just uh, we'll kill people, but we want to kill. Like, we don't kill, We don't want to kill the big toys. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. I can. Yeah. But for me, uh, it would be hard to see some of the bigger characters go before the final. You know, we we have another one. You know, there's others to kill. That's that's true. You know, they maybe they want to save them. Yeah, but, uh, but as far as the deaths at the end of the movie, like okay, Thanos said he wanted you know he kills half, half the, population the population to save the planet type thing. Yeah, so yeah. you do see half these characters. Is it go. at random then? Just random ones die. That's what he said randomly. Like the at one point random. in the dialogue, he said yeah, random. Yeah, so yeah. it's fair between you know. The poor, the wealthy, you know, the powerful, the powerless, everything like that. But you can't kill a character when you've announced his sequel. 
You can't kill Spider-Man when you announce there's going to be a sequel to The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. Like, when when all these characters start dying at the end, just, you know, evaporating, disintegrating, whatever. Yeah. Once it started with Black Panther, I'm like, get out of here. Black Panther's not dead. I He's know. not going to stay dead. It was devastating to the people in the theater, though. They're like, oh, no, not him. It's not him. Yeah, if it's, yeah, it was like just Star-Lord, they're not going to kill Star-Lord. No. And I know that. And it's very, it's one of those things that even happens in kids' movies where it's like, they all turn into ghosts, and then at the end, all the ghosts come back and they're happy again, like Beauty and the Beast or some crap like that, you know? Right. So, yeah, I know that the stakes seemed high at the end, but it's, it's a ruse. It is. It is. It's just one of those <laughs> things where I was... I was kind of rolling my eyes where it's like, all right, I'm not buying this. I'm not investing into this part of the movie emotionally at all, even though I will admit I did get a tad emotional, even though I know he's not dead. But Spider Man is my favorite Marvel character. Oh, but his death his was death, the worst. Oh, his man, death was he the was worst. so scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah, tough. Just everybody else is just like, "What's happening?" And then they die, or you know. And just... it was a moment between but, Tony and him too, where he's like hanging on. Exactly. To him. Yeah, that was yeah. heart wrenching. That was the one death. Even though I know it's not going to stick, it's it was heart wrenching to just see that interaction with him. And you know, it's my favorite Marvel character. So even if it's a death that yeah, isn't it's going still to wrong, stick, it still was just eye, like yeah. I don't ever. I don't even want to see Spider Man fake that. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, but I do, I do think that this, once again, you were talking about the setup and how this just feels like another setup for, like, another... And that's what they're doing, though. You know, they are raising the stakes of being like, okay, now we're down to a few that have to get the others back. So yeah. the team has been dwindled down, so I get why they did it, but yeah, I can see where it's just like, all right, like, everybody's turning into dust now? Yeah, like, it was just... a it, lot of turning into dust. Right, with some of them, I was like, oh my god, oh no, oh no. And then when it was Black Panther, I'm like, alright, nah, yeah, like they nah, this ain't gonna stick. But it was a, kind of a, like, a moment for me of being like, who's it gonna, like, once you see one of them go, be like, oh, like, uh, Drax, oh god, now Drax, like, yeah. who's gonna stay, who's gonna go for the next one? So, there was a moment where I thought it was kind of like a little heart wrench where I'm like, oh no, who are we going to not see for a little while? <laughs> like, oh no, I want to yeah, see them. And I just thought, uh, it's just, it's kind of, um, you know, they've done it with Loki, they did it with uh, Agent Phil Coulson where it's like, eh, he's dead. Oh, no, he's not dead. We're going to bring him back. We'll contrive some way to bring him back. Yes, so write it in. Yeah. And I understand, I have not read the Infinity Gauntlet comic line, but I know that, you know, you can turn back time with the Gauntlet. You can alter reality and everything yeah. like that. You can resurrect the dead with happen. the Soul Stone. Right, I get that most of these characters can come back. But I just hope it's not a thing where it's like they feel like every single one comes back, everything's reset. Like, Hunky you know, it's uh, like Superman, the original Superman, where he just spins, spins around the world, everything's yeah. reset, and back to normal. I just hope that... They don't do that, given how many characters they killed off at the end. Right, right. Um, well, let's talk a little bit more about some of the points where we were talking in the spoiler-free review of just some disappointing short changes of the characters. And for me, the you, you see Hulk at the beginning, and then you get no Hulk? That yeah. sucks for me. I was like, I want to see Hulk kick some ass in this. And you called it when we saw the trailer being like, I think Bruce Banner's in the Hulk buster. Like, yeah, I think that's, and I was like, uh, and even then he's like clumsy, he's not Hulk. I was really bummed out that not only was like the reunion of Black Widow and Bruce Banner kind of weak, I was kind of upset that he never turned into Hulk again. Yeah, and, and speaking of that reunion, it, it's one of those things where we couldn't feel the moment because they had to tag it with a punchline at the end. Like, right. Just, and once again, that just takes away from the reunion aspect of it where maybe if it was a little bit more emotional, maybe if there was just a little bit more of a serious tone. I know that these movies, they make their money on being fun, being entertaining, and being very light. Yeah. But I feel like they sacrifice genuine moments to crack a joke. Yeah. And it, it happened more in previous movies. It didn't happen too much in this, but that is definitely one moment where it's like, we did, we couldn't have the moment they had to make a joke. Yeah, and it kind of, yeah, that, that short changed me a little bit. And then also, I will admit that like for me, Doctor Strange... I don't see Benedict Cumberbatch like really in this. I didn't believe it all that much. I didn't believe it in his solo movie and in this. I just like he never looked badass to me. Where he's like, "Why don't you try it now?" And I'm like, "Ugh, you know, yeah, you know almost, you're not selling yeah. me, bro." He almost looked too confident. Where it's just like, "All right, this thing's gonna fight me. I'm gonna stop yeah, it." Yeah. Why is he so powerful out of all of them? Why does he know much and think that he can protect it? I was like, "Dude, you don't. You haven't earned it." To me. Yeah, yeah, they they did. I was surprised at how much they gave him, given yeah. that he is a new character and that his movie wasn't the most well received. It wasn't the biggest hit at the box office. So the fact that they gave him so much to do, I mean, yeah. I get it. He is 
kind of like you know um, the source of knowledge for a lot of what's going on. Yeah. So I get that he has to you know deliver some exposition, some information to the characters and to us, the audience. Yeah. But then like once we're getting in the movie, I'm just like, man, uh, I don't just... know if they're gonna do a Doctor Strange sequel because they're just jamming him in this movie as much yeah. as they can. You know, they, so it's one of those things where. I get why they did it, but I don't like that they did it. I don't like that they did it either. Yeah, I get why they did it, because, you know, he has one of the stones. It's important to have him have one of the stones. But, yeah, just too much Doctor Strange. Um, but I did like the plot, the way the plot flowed. I like that once we talked about before, but we can go a little bit more. in this being Thanos' journey, mm. and I like that it's punctuated, being like, he needs to find these stones, and that's what's happening. It's really just the journey of Thanos finding these stones. Yeah, and going and, from place to place, seeking them out, and beating the shit out of people and getting them from them. Yeah. And it was awesome. Yeah, I like that That instead of, you know, like for instance, Guardians of the Galaxy, you stick with the Guardians, you see him, you know, trot all around the galaxy. It, with this, it's, you see Thanos and you follow him as he goes to these different little, like, satellites of Avengers and tries to get these, you know, stones. So, yeah. I, it was... I like was the a, of it. Yeah, like the structure of it. Yeah, I did like the structure of it. And I feel like it was a, you know, it was a bold choice to basically make the villain the lead character. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much... I would say he has the most screen time out of everybody. That's a big change. That's a, not, I don't know if it's a risk or not, but it kind of is a big risk to take. And I think that they pulled it off really nicely. I think it's the strongest asset of this movie is yeah. Thanos. That's what I said in the, um, the spoiler-free review, but uh, Red Skull... Red Skull. Let's talk about Red Skull. <laughs> I was like, Red Skull? That was yes! that. that. Red Skull. That was the part of the movie where it's just like, you know, these movies, they try to shroud him in secrecy so much. But, you know, they, this character was on set, so you assume they're in the movie kind of never. thing. No, never. Never did I see Never for a coming. second did I think we'd see Red Skull. <laughs> and even though he was only in it for a scene or two, oh, man. it was a very important scene. But just yeah. that reveal, like, I mean, there are people in the rows behind us cussing. Like, what the? What? No way! No yeah. way! Just kind of just, it was a mind-blowing moment. It and so was. I commend them for still being able to surprise us and kind of blow our minds with things like that. Personally, I really liked the first Avenger. I know you have your problems with it. A lot of people didn't like it. They don't think it's the strongest. By no means do I think it's better than the Winter Soldier. But it made me love Captain America as a character. And I thought Red Skull was just an, you know, an overlooked villain that was really cool in that movie. Yeah, I think of the first phase of the MCU, mm -hmm. Red Skull might be the best villain out of those movies. And yeah. I like that, even though First Avenger wasn't the first MCU movie, that they hearken back to phase one. Kind of just like, yeah. I felt like it was a payoff for fans who have stuck with, you know, through all 18 of these movies over the last 10 years. Yeah. And to the to a point, I kind of feel like it. Sometimes it that works to a fault to the movie where it's like, you know, it, it's fun. There's a lot of cool character moments that you, you know you harken back to and call back to, but you have to watch 18 movies to like really yeah. fully appreciate this. Right? Because if I watched this with, let's say, I went with my girlfriend, the whole theater would gasp, and she'd be like, "Who the hell is that? <laughs> right, like, why right. would I care about that?" But so I get that. But for diehard fans, that was a really cool moment, and it's sort of, um, it's like, you, eh. <sighs> fuck, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, um, we'll just pick back up. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Uh, big epic moments that made us like smile a lot. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, I was sensing you having a grin on your face for a few moments. What moments were like, yes, this is this is awesome. When he got the iron spider suit, that was the bit like that was the big moment for me. That was just yeah. like, yes, here we go. It's iron spider time. And then later when the arms oh, and the legs, the legs came out and just oh. I was I was, that was I was gushing at that point. Like yeah. yes, because even though we got him in Civil War two years ago, homecoming last year, Infinity War this year, and his neck in his sequel next year, I can't get enough Spider Man. They're doing it so right. With Tom Holland, I just yeah. can't get enough of it. And like he is one character, even though he's prominently featured, I can't say he got short change. They didn't feature him enough, but I just wanted more of him. I know, me too. And I think that they actually gave him more than I thought they would with this. And I thought they were just gonna give him like a scene or two where he jumps in and he goes like back to school War. or something yeah. like that. Yeah, like it's a war, but no, he stays with this journey the whole time. And you're right, I could have used more Spider Man easily. Yeah. But what about the what was your stand up and cheer moment of the movie? I mean, there was a few. First when you see Cap for the first time when the train's passing, you see a shadow, you're like, oh and that's like Cap, you're like, Yes. Yeah, Cap's that was back. a good moment. Super happy with that one. And also when Groot uses his arm to make the handle for the new hammer. 
Yeah. Cool. That, that was so was, cool. Yeah, that was pretty awesome, too. Yeah, so those were my two huge moments, but there's a lot trickled in there where it's just like in the midst of the action, something happens. You're like, oh, that was yeah. sweet. Like, yeah, there was the, a lot of the action in this movie was handled very well, especially yeah. given that they're, you know, when they are fighting, you know, CG rendered characters at the end, it still looked real enough and it still was clear enough. You know, it wasn't yeah. like just throwing a bunch of, no, you know, visual noise at you on the screen. It was. Clear, concise, and there were some really badass moments. Really badass moments. I kind of wish that Cap's shield was more involved and that little arm shield he had was just okay to me. Yeah. And I also really liked, uh, you know, the Winter Soldier type of battles. Those are the things I wanted a little bit more of. More hand-to-hand -hand type mm -hmm. of things with, like, real, you know, characters or, like, mercenaries or things like that. But when it's these four, six-legged creatures, it seemed a little bit, like... This isn't really Captain America's style of fighting. Right, He's right. just rolling around the ground <laughs> trying to get these things off of him type of thing. Where I want a little bit more like fisticuffs. And also when Thor comes back to Earth, that was an also, that was also like, a stand up and cheer kind of moment. Yeah, Thor really had like, a, he was a big crucial character in this that like that's when I, if I wasn't very happy with Doctor Strange being so prominent, I was really happy that Thor was. Was. And that they lit the comedy that was in Thor Ragnarok mixed with Guardians. Good yeah. choice to have Thor... With the Guardians. Yeah, honestly, that'd be awesome if they spun that off where it's like Thor and the Guardians are, they're off in space yeah. having adventures. I would love to see that. Because the little, like... The little rivalry between Star-Lord <laughs> yeah, and Thor, that I was so that was good. good. Like, this is good. Like, and that's just one of those things where they have these character interactions and they play well off each other. Yeah. Even though there are some times where we said, like, there were, it was a little too funny. There were too many jokes at some points. But they were handled well. Yeah. You know, given that, like... This is how Star Lord would act around somebody who's like you know, impressed yeah, by Thor. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that the relationship with Rocket and Thor was almost like Thor was Rocket's Star Lord that he wants to hang out with. You right. Know, like if he sits there and just jabs at Star Lord all the time, now he has someone to be like, whatever, dude. Like he's the cool guy. He's cooler yeah. than you are, type of thing. So I thought that that was a great choice. And you're right; they could do a whole movie on just Thor. And, and the Guardians. The Thor yeah. and Rocket movie would be great. Thor and Rocket would be great. I, yeah, I've never read any comics, but I'm sure there has to be matchups with Thor and Rocket. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, but yeah, those were a few stand up and cheer moments, but I mean, the whole theater, there was a. That's what I liked about this movie, is that it did feel epic on that sense that there was probably six or seven moments where the theater was like, damn, like, yeah. that's what you need out of these movies. Yeah, and that's what I love about going to event movies like this on opening night. Everybody, there's a buzz in the air. Everybody's yeah. really excited for it. And there are, of course, there are, you know, people are going to be snarky about everything in life. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, everybody's there. They want the movie to be the best that it can be. They stand up and cheer yeah. for it. And so, like, that's just, and, you know, we are... Old uh, tagline was "There's no place like the theater," and that's one of those moments where that is absolutely true. True, you can't get it even if you have a group of friends that like, you're all excited to watch it at home. It's not the same when you're in a crowded theater and everybody's feeling the same. Right, because there's an air of respect for this movie. There's an air of respect where everyone stays quiet. They want to hear what's going on. They want to see how it unfolds. And there was a time where I looked around this theater. I was like, "Look at all these strangers all together." Leading up to this big movie moment, and yeah, I think that like those were those were the memorable times that the theater comes with, and this was a good movie to see in a big crowd of theater. Absolutely, yeah. Buffs. All right, everyone, that was our spoiler review for Avengers: Infinity War. Once again, I gave it an eight point five. Dennis gave it a seven point five. What did you guys think of the movie? Was it everything you wanted it to be? And what are you looking forward to for the following Avengers movie? Leave all the comments down below. And be sure to join us later this week. I mean, following this big epic in the theater, we're going to go and flip the coin. We're going to go to a smaller Netflix movie, Kodachrome, just released a few weeks ago. Yeah. We'll give you our review on that this Friday. But wherever you are, whoever you're with, watch more movies.